imagine how much stuff you have to do. Imagine how much easier life would be if you had an exact copy of yourself to do the things you didn't want to do. How convenient would that be? People have thought about this for a long time, and there's a lot of scientists who believe a breakthrough in cloning would drastically help humans as a population. We could cure a lot of disabilities, and we could create a better world. But there's a lot of controversy as to why we shouldn't be cloning, specifically cloning humans. Now, before I go into the pros and cons of cloning, I'm going to give you a brief history. Now, early cloning has been around for many years, and is believed to be around since the 1600s. Of course, that was only plant cloning, which is quite simple compared to the animal cloning, which first began in 1885. Now, at the time, there was a scientist named Hans, and Hans was completely absorbed in the idea of cloning something that wasn't a plant. This fascination led him to study sea urchins. Sea urchins are relatively simple organisms which could easily be observed during developmental stages. So what did Hans do? He breeded some sea urchins, waited for the embryo to split into two, and shook them until they split apart completely. From then on, he watched as they grew into two separate but identical organisms. This experiment concluded that each cell in the early embryo has its very own set of genetic instructions and hence was able to grow into two separate sea urchins. Fast forward a couple of decades and we have another scientist named Hans Spiemann. Spiemann wanted to expand on his former scientist friend and studied cloning vertebrae. This proved much more difficult because the specimens Spiemann studied had embryos which were much more sticky than sea urchin embryos. To split the embryos in the early stages, Spiemann went to the extreme of using baby hairs to create a noose so he could split the embryos into two separate cells. Once the cells split, they had grown successfully into two separate organisms, much like the sea urchins did. However, the only problem he faced was that the salamanders never fully developed, leaving them unable to reproduce. Many other experiments were performed, such as nuclear transplants, which proved that even somatic cells from developed species can be used to create an exact copy of the original specimen. Throughout the next few decades, scientists continued to expand on their research and their experiments, using larger animals as technology advanced. It's incredible that just last year we were able to create some of the very first stem cells in history. It's amazing how much closer we are to curing paralysis and other disabilities. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Scientists intend to use this to cure illnesses, disabilities, and in some cases, revive extinct species or save endangered ones. It all seems so simple, doesn't it? Why aren't we cloning a bunch of people right now? How come we haven't cured paralysis yet? The truth of the matter is that there are a lot more complications to cloning. There have been so many failures in the past that it seems so close, yet so far. It's all because humans enter complex anatomy. In theory, the way scientists have been trying to clone people is by performing a procedure called a nuclear transplant. Essentially, the idea behind this is to take an unfertilized egg cell and remove the nucleus to replace it with the nucleus of a cell from the original specimen. Now, the problem is that scientists need to figure out a way to stack together all these different cells to create a human, because once the cell becomes fertilized, it will only produce the type of cell that it got its nucleus from. However, human cloning has been banned worldwide due to ethical and moral controversies that surround the topic. Despite all the controversies on genetic cloning, there would be and there are a lot of benefits to this technology. Cloning has recently led us to begin studying stem cells, which could possibly cure many disabilities and diseases that still lack any treatment. Cloning can easily be used to restore whole ecosystems by repopulating important species to the earth. The world could be such a better place if this technology is applied correctly. Of course, everything has some flaws. People always ask, what if something goes wrong like it has many times in the past? People far and wide would cause a storm if a successfully cloned person suffered. Would people who were cloned be discriminated against? What would happen to partially successful clones? It wouldn't be right to treat them unfairly or have them suffer, which is why a lot of people believe it is wrong to be cloning humans, even if it is just partial cloning for organs and such. Another thing that people always ask is, just because we can do it, 
does it mean we should? Just because we can bring back endangered species, should we do it? I mean, there's a whole movie as to why we shouldn't be bringing back endangered species, but that's beside the point. Is it really right to be tampering with nature? There are so many questions left with no answers. In conclusion, cloning can be a good thing if it's used and applied properly. But there are so many arguments against the idea that it would be almost pointless for scientists to even attempt human cloning without setting ground rules and getting government and public approval. For now, scientists will work on other ways of curing diseases and aiding the environment. All we can do for now is support them in their attempts to make life better for everyone. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more interesting discussions and educational videos. Sources for this information can be found in the description box below. This is Sullivan, signing out.